Yo, what's up guys and welcome back for the next part of the RU discussion with myself and Eon X. Now if you guys actually missed the uh, previous parts, because I believe this is part 3 if I'm not mistaken. Yes, yes it is, part number 3. Yeah, there's a playlist down below in the description and um, honestly, we're just going to start. So go ahead and hit up Cofagoras, go. Alright, so Cofagoras is one of those Pokemon that isn't necessarily bad, it is just... It just really struggles to stand out because RU already has some pretty good ghost types and Jellicent and Hoopa and Rotom. Um, obviously, when you first look at it, it's got an insane defense stat of one, base 145, which is one of the highest in the tier. Um, but unfortunately, it doesn't really have reliable recovery, so that just really hinders it. Um, defensively, and even though it does have like an offensive trick room set, for those of you that haven't played Gen 6, Hidden Power got nerfed a fair bit. Uh, went from 70 power to 60 power, and that makes a lot more difference than you might think when that's your main coverage option on a trick room set. Um, it's also, uh, it does have access to Toxic Spikes, but when you're playing in the RU metagame where Pokemon such as Venusaur, uh, Drapion and the best defogger is immune to toxic spikes as well. It doesn't really like help Kefarius stand out at all. Uh, the main set that I actually like to use, which is the same set that I use in OU, is actually the Nasty Flat Trick Room set. Um, mm. With Willow as seeing is how you don't really need coverage, I feel, anyway. Uh, if you want to hit the dark types such as Absol or uh, Drapion, you can just Willow as them upon switching and la later set up with your Nasty Flat. But obviously, this requires a ton of support. You want to be able to get rid of Houndoom. Um, you're definitely just going to want chip damage with hazards. But again, like the Toxic Spike set isn't really one that shines with it, even though it does have great defenses. Uh, it has that low base HP. I mean, it is a ghost type. That's like common amongst ghost types. And um, it does well, have pain uh, Well, unless you're Giratina, of course. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> Um, I, gu I guess the other thing I will touch on, um, and it's something that Cofagricus does have that kind of going for it, and that's the fact that it does have access to Haze. But again, the problem is there aren't a lot of like RU sweepers out there outside of like Delphox and Verizion. And uh, Verizion kind of like carries Lumberry, so it's not like you can burn that in time. And Delphox, you're better off hitting that with an attack anyway. Correct, and it does have a cool ability in Mummy, um, which is really uh, fun to see. Like I know when Slurpuff was around for like a day, uh, I saw Kefarius. <laughs> right? Yeah, I saw Kefarius um, around just because Mummy obviously gets rid of that burden, so it makes Slurpuff a bit more manageable. Back when it was, of course, you know there, but it's cool ability right. for when because it, it, it is bulky, it, so it can live a hit, so it'll get rid yeah, of your it, ability. And, it's, and it still helps against some attackers like Embora. It takes away Reckless, so you can live the next attack. But why would you want to take that much damage in the first place on a Pokemon without reliable recovery? And Metacham, kind of same thing. Yeah, you take away pure power, but why are you wanting to take that much damage yeah, Gen, um, on a Pokemon that doesn't have reliable recovory? Yeah, and Metagem switching out anyway after it hits you with a Zen head, but it's more likely hitting you with a Zen head, but upon switching, and then switching out. Like, there's no way. Yeah, because it fears burns, it's weak to ghost attacks, so it's kind of like why would it stay in? <laughs> it's such a cool Pokemon, though. It's definitely an interesting Pokemon. If you're going I love room, the concept of it. Like, don't get me wrong, I love the concept of it, but and even in uh, black and white, it was really good, like in the higher tiers. But now, just I feel I feel like uh, the knockoff buff really just hurts this thing. Like yeah, a ton. I, I think in specifically in the tier ten in RU, it doesn't shine as much as it can in OU. Uh, because definitely, I, mean, I don't want to dwell too much into that, but I have a lot of experience with this Pokemon oh, yeah. in OU, and um, it like. Has like, just in general, the metagame yeah. in R is just not kind to it at all. It's even reflected in viability rankings. It's all the way down in, like, C- minus rank. And, um, like, I don't know, like, it's viability rank in OU, but um, I know, like, just being a C- minus rank, that's, like, the that's really, really low. And usually that's reserved for, like, Pokemon that are just niche, like, like have niches in, like, RU, but aren't RU by usage. But when you're are you by usage and C minus rank, that just means the metagame is not kind to you at all. Yeah, and with you know, good like obviously it, it makes sense. Again, knockoff is everywhere. Um, 
And again, the toxic spikes. Like I, I can't stress the toxic spikes set, which it's cool in theory, but when Venusaur again, Flygon being the best defogger, uh, even Drapion. Yeah, uh, and Drapion but, just but, running around. Yeah. Like, like Drapion is just being better in the fact that it has stab knockoff to threaten you out. Yeah, like, and, and soon, Blastoise. Like, it, like, like, as soon as it absorbs toxic spikes, it's like, hey, I have a stab knockoff that I'm going to threaten you with, even though I might get burned. It's a cool idea for a spin blocker, but I mean, Blastoise runs refresh, so it doesn't really care too much about your uh, your poison. Blastoise yeah, could yeah. run force if it wants to, but it doesn't yeah, usually. Yeah, basically, once it hits Kafakris with toxic, it's eventually going to win. Yeah. Like, it'll take a while, but it's eventually going to win because it has refresh. Yeah, still a really cool Pokemon, really cool concept. Uh, next up is Delphox. Do you want to hit it up first, and I'll come in after? Uh, I'll, I'll let you hit up Delphox the God first. <laughs> well, Delphox is a really cool Pokemon. Um, even though its stab is Psychic and Fire, its base speed in the tier 337 uh, allows it to outspeed a ton of Pokemon like Drapion, um, not non scarf Flygon yeah, as well. Which is pretty huge. Yeah, uh, especially because it does have access to moves like Dazzling Gleam, and um, which also allows it to muscle through Pokemon such as Scrafty in the tier. Um, it has a really cool ability. I think in Magician, I think in Magician is actually a really cool ability. Although typically I use just Blaze on the spec set, uh, but it also does have access to Switcheroo, which allows the uh, even the spec set to cripple Pokemon that can normally take a hit. I'm talking about Pokemon like Special Defensive Deancey if you want to trick them, crippling that for maybe your bird that you have paired with Delphox, or um, yep. even just keep even just keep your uh, your stab because stab Fire Blast is doing a lot. Um, and even, again, Switcheroo is still pretty cool for. Um, for crippling mons like Hound do if they're physically oriented, not that they would be, but if they have Sucker Punch, it definitely right. cripples them. Yeah, it, it makes it much harder for them to use Sucker Punch. A set I actually like with Del Fox, like much more than Specs actually, is the Call Mind set with Life Orb. Yeah, yeah. And and the reason I like that so much is because it can still wall break with Life Orb, and say your opponent's like running a pretty slow team, like a Stolly type team, you you get a point Call Mind, and their their Diancy is weakened to like about 50% or something, which isn't too terribly hard to do if you can chip it down with something, um, then that's probably just sweeping straight through your opponent's yeah. team because and not much is taking plus one life or pits from Delphox. Uh, and if you're running Calm Mind, I would say run Grass Knot over Dazzling Gleam because Psychic Absolutely, is already going to yeah. hurt Flygon a lot anyway at plus one, and Grass Knot allows you to hit the likes of Silent Toad, uh, Alamola, well, not necessarily Alamola, Slow King for more damage, like specifically. Yeah, a um, um, couple of things I did want to touch on as negative points for Del Fox, like even though it is like a very solid special attacker in the tier, it's it's kind of hindered by Deancey and Slowking, and those are two of the best Pokemon in the tier. Like they're easily top fifteen Pokemon in the tier, and its psychic typing does make it prone to pursuit trapping, which is pretty common in the tier. And obviously with Dugtrio on the rise once again, and it being faster than any non-scarf Del Fox. Being trapped by that's kind of bad as a sweeper. Yeah, and obviously being weak to rocks also hinders uh, your just your, your ability to wall break and sweep. But I mean, I like Blaze on it. It hits hella hard, especially if it's specs. Oh yeah, and absolutely. This Pokemon could two kill Alamolo with uh, Blaze Fire Blast. So yeah, the last thing I wanted to touch on with Delphox, it does have a Scarf set with, uh, and I would definitely run Dazzling Gleam with that set, and that does allow it to just outright revenge kill Dragon Dance Crafty, Correct. which isn't the most, which isn't the best sweeper in the tier, the most threatening sweeper in the tier, but it is sometimes a little tricky to deal with, since it does have decent natural bulk, and the four times super effective move is just gonna knock it clean out. Yeah. Um, and it is the fastest viable Scarf user in the tier, being faster than Flygon, so it does have that going for it as well. Yeah, correct. Um, and again, just because it's weak to Pursuit Trap, guys, or you can switch in Deancey, doesn't mean that this Pokemon isn't a threat. I find myself, if I'm not That's, using if yeah. I'm not using Deancey or Slowking, this Mon gets a kill before I revenge kill it. Definitely. Absolutely. Um, like, I, like I said, it is a very good Pokemon, It is, but it is held back by some top threats, like uh, Deancey, Slowking, even Houndoom gives it a very hard time. Um, but outside of that, it is pretty difficult to initially switch into. Like, it's relatively easy to revenge kill due to the current state of the metagame, but 
um, switching into it, uh, not as easy. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, next Pokemon is Deancey, and okay, you can start this time. This is probably one of the best Pokemon in the tier right now. Absolutely. Uh, Deancey is definitely a top three support Pokemon. Um, it's got Stealth Rock, it has Heal Bell. Um, some sets even run Toxic now that Mega Steelix is gone to deal with the bulky water types that want to switch into it. It has more offensive sets, like Offensive Trick Room, um, and I think a set that's been climbing since Are You Open is an Offensive Stealth Rock set with Shookaberry. Um, which obviously is able to lure in Flygon and knock it clean down with uh, Moonblast. Um, obviously, it, it still does have some unexplored sets like um, <clears throat> like Substitute Call Mind, uh, which does, hasn't really received a lot of usage or exploration, but definitely has uh, some intrigue to it since obviously Mo Fairy is a fantastic offensive typing and it does have Moonblast. Um, but overall, it's just a really good Pokemon. Yeah, right now. obviously, its rock typing is so great as well, making it a, just a natural check to Pokemon like Fletchling, um, also to Delphox, just with its max but death, like it takes hits. It's 438 speed up. That's really bad uh, base HP, base 50, but it tanks hits from so much in the tier. You don't even need investment in attack because the only Pokemon you're really hitting with Diamond Storm, if it's not Delphox, which is going to take a crap load, it's Fletchling. Uh, Fletching, which is gonna take, it's gonna die. So yeah, it's gonna even through burn, it's gonna go yeah. down. Um, another target would be Sigilith, Fraviary, but they're still gonna be taking a lot. Now the one drawback of Diamond Storm, obviously, is the fact that it does have low PP. So it, even though it can check Braviary, the cell bulk upset, you're you'll probably want something else to check it simply because it's easy to stall out Diamond Storm PP. Yeah. I'm actually not the biggest fan of offensive Shookaberry Lurdia because I feel like its best role is the support set on its own, especially because I feel like an offensive one is easily worn down for Pokemon like Fletchling there, and offense in its own hates Pokemon like Fletch. Fletch just outright revenge kills so much, especially if you're running enough speed for uh, things like Absol. And yeah, I yeah, I, I personally prefer if I'm going offensive the Trick Room set. Yeah, um, I like that but, a lot too. But obviously the Shuka Stealth Rock set does have some use if you can't fit something like Uxi or Dragon on your offensive team and you still need a Stealth Rock setter. Um, it can certainly at least soft check stuff like Fletchender and Delphox, hopefully long enough to where you can use your offensive pressure to get rid of them. Correct. Um, obviously, being a rock type is great, but it it but it does make it the only fairy type in Are You neutral to fighting, where um, stuff like Verizion, Metacham, even Embar are very powerful in the tier, and you definitely need checks for them. So any team using the uh, Diancy is gonna be a little bit more hard pressed for a fighting type check. Yeah, but not to say that you won't take a hit from them. You will take one hit. Yeah. You will take yeah, even the strongest hits from them. You'll take Life Orb, Close Combat. You'll more. You'll probably take a, a superpower, like a Bandit superpower. At least one. It'll probably do around like 90%. <laughs> but you will yeah, take it, at it'll, least one. It'll do a lot, but you'll take it. And another thing is a more mixed defensive set that I used uh, a lot earlier when it, like when it first dropped uh, back in, I believe, January. Um, and it's like, I think it's something like... Uh, max HP 164 defense 92 special defense with uh, I think boldest nature or something like that um, and that just like lets it take more physical hits so if you so if you can't put um, like for, for example if uh, you're worried about taking repeated flare blitzes then you do that a little bit better and it and you still check most of what you need to on the special sides just not as well yeah uh, I, I would definitely pair that uh, with something that is especially defensive, like Registeel or something like that, so uh, you're not hurt as badly. But um, definitely, definitely a set worth considering if you need it. Yeah. But otherwise, I would just stick with fully specially defensive. And on uh, on more offensive sets, as you mentioned, uh, HP Fire is also an option to hit a Scavalier, which is probably one of the main DNC switchings. Uh, oh, yeah. in the tier. Um, <laughs> also, another thing I want to know is, as you can say, he did say bold nature, but we are running Diamond Storm. Diamond, you don't necessarily need Deancey's attack for Diamond Storm to do what it does. You still check Fletchlinger, um, Fletchlinger, excuse me, why did I say Fletchling and they're <laughs> fetching there uh, with your Diamond Storm, uh, even without attack investment. You're still hitting the Pokemon that are weak to it without attack investment. So. Yeah, your your main attack is going to be Moonblast on any Diancy set. Um, even like the offensive Trick Room set, it, 
it will oftentimes run Moonblast and Diamond Storm, but you're still wanting to focus on special attack because you're using Moonblast most of the time and Diamond Storm for the few things that Moonblast doesn't yeah, hit as hard. But I mean, offensive uh, Diamond Storm with a Life Orb can 2 KO offensive Venusaur, so that's something oh, yeah. as well. Um, yeah. I think it does like 44% min, so after Stealth Rock, 2 KO, something like that. Yeah, um, so, yeah, that sounds about right, yeah. Yeah. Next Pokemon is Drapion, and uh, another really cool Pokemon that's here, uh, which has a really uh, interesting speed stat, 317, um, allowing its outspeed Pokemon like Metacham in the tier. It does have access to Swords Dance. Uh, it's also a Poison type and Grounded, so not only can it absorb uh, Toxic Spikes, but it can get them up. Pursuit is also a really cool option, um, and this is another Pokemon that can Pursuit Trap Delphox locked into uh, Psychic, Obviously, being part dark type, it's not going to be taking any damage from that. And then it has one of the best moves in the game being knockoff, uh, crippling <laughs> you. Um, and it, the really, really cool thing about it is it's a dark type that can deal with fairies because of its secondary stab and poison jab. So Romatis and even uh, Deancey have to think twice about switching into this. Um, Deancey can take hits very easily, but Earthquake is also an option that, uh, that Drapion does have. And I've actually ran Shookaberry Lure Drapion with Ice Fang uh, back during SBL yeah. for uh, Flygon because it always lured in Flygon, which could um, easily outspeed if it wanted to and defog or earthquake me back. Uh, another thing that Shookaberry does for Drapion is make it to where it's not trapped or revenge killed by Ductrio yeah. uh, nearly as easily. Like, obviously, it's still going to be taking a crap load from Earthquake, but um, it makes it to where you actually need to take chip damage for Duck Trio to knock you out instead of, instead of it just clean KOing you from full. Um, like, like you said, Pursuit's very good um, on Drapion because it's because it gets stab on it. It can run uh, Scarf and Band sets to either power it up or make it faster. Um, obviously, uh, the, the Scarf Drapion set is probably more reliable at trapping Delphox because then you outspeed it, you don't have to worry about taking a possible fire blast. Um, and you create 50-50 with, am I going to pursue, am I going to knock off? And Delphox has to figure out which one you're going to do, even if it's locked into fire blast. Like, um, yeah, if you switch out, I could pursue you. If you stay in, I could hit you with knock off and knock you out anyway. Yeah. Um, and Scarf, obviously, um, not not incredibly powerful, um, but it's more so just to get off a quick pursuit, a quick knockoff. Um, I even run toxic spikes on it um, to make it a little bit trickier for offense to deal with because oftentimes the layer of toxic spikes early against offense that maybe doesn't have Venus or it will rarely ever have defog. Um, it's just like straight up offense is what I'm talking about. Yeah, um, that can oftentimes just uh, just be a major nuisance for those teams and make it easier for you to wear them down. Um, obviously, Sword Stance very good, as you mentioned, um, because it can run Lumberry to avoid status, or Shookaberry to lure in Flygon and keep from being revenge killed by Duck Trio as easily. And it does have Sniper, um, which is definitely not an ability you want to build a set around. <laughs> but what about but, Scope, Scope Lens Flyver? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. No. Um, but on, on the flip side of that, uh, whenever it does, whenever you do happen to land a critical hit, it's just going to be incredibly powerful, and especially if you're a choice band uh, or boosted with Swords Dance. So it's something that can definitely bail you out of the situation, but not something I would rely on. I at just all. I just run Battle Armor if you're running Shookaberry too. You don't want to be crit by Duck oh, Trio. Yeah. You don't want to be crit by Duck Trio or Flygon and get knocked out through your Shooka, especially Band yeah. Duck Trio, which actually, like, if it does crit you, it will kill you. Yeah, it's, it's really power. Yeah, power. and uh, it also has really cool support options as well, um, and Taunt and Whirlwind, obviously knock off if you want to run like a more spe special defensive set. I don't know if you could really fit that on there, but it does have those options. Yeah, I, I feel like especially defensive sets are really hard to pull off in the current metagame because it just has a terrible case of four moves last syndrome. Um, like it wants knockoff, it wants whirlwind, it wants taunt, it wants toxic spikes, um, it wants pursuit. Um, I know that sounds strange, but um, it does want pursuit because a lot of stall teams struggle with Hoopa. Correct. Um, and, and that's the kind of teams you're going to be wanting to use that sort of Drapion set on, so you're going to need to fit pursuit on there somewhere. Um, you obviously want Poison Fang to where. Uh, 
or poison thing, poison jab, uh, <laughs> um, to where stuff like Diancy, Granbull, stuff like that just doesn't come in on you for absolutely no cost at all. Um, that being said, uh, the last good point I do want to point out on Drapion is the fact that it is a soft offensive check to Venusaur. Like, it's not going to be taking a lot of hits from it, but it can take one or two. Yeah, it does resist a dual pretty, stab. Yeah, it at least resists a dual stab and threatens it with knockoff to remove its power or source of recovery. So it can be a decent offensive check to Venusaur, but, you, but if you're using it as your main check, you might want to try something else. You're, you're going to be worn down because of your lack of recovery. Another yeah. thing to note, and uh, I've seen this on the lower ladder, uh, and I've used this myself in Hita Fajita, but there's acupressure uh, <laughs> some Drapion, which is pretty cool because it can't be crit. And you know, if you get your actually, boost... Actually, what's funny is I was wa I was uh, re-watching uh, the RU Live we did about a month back, and uh, yeah. We I faced that, yeah. Yeah, I almost got destroyed by Rest Talk. Yeah, so, so, in this so, it, it, <laughs> if you see it, don't just shrug that off, okay? If it gets enough boost, it is crazy. But, but to my credit, I did call what it was just by the yeah, name. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so next up, we have Judge Gun. Uh, such a cool. I always love the concept of Judge Gun. Um, one, it's it has great abilities. Three, three great abilities: Ruskin, Sheer Force, and um, Mold Breaker. Um, though in the tier itself, I typically like to use Rough Skin or Sheer Force. Um, yeah, Mold Breaker doesn't really do it a lot of good, so yeah. Earthquake is, it doesn't do much for it with coverage. Yeah, yeah, but uh, Rough Skin, obviously, uh, combined with Rocky Helmet, does give you uh, defensive options. It has decent base defense and base 90 and 77 HP. It has access to Glare, wow, I can't spell, Glare, Stealth Rock, <laughs> Dragon Tail, and moves like that, so you will be wearing down Pokemon physical attackers. Uh, like you could switch this thing into like Drapion, and Drapion will probably take around forty something percent to itself. Um, and there's also um, it's the fact that it's pure Dragon, so it's not completely like offensively or defensively. Dragon has good resistances as well as um, just good offensive presence. Um, one of the main things I also like about this thing is that it does have access to Sucker Punch as well, so it does have a priority move. Obviously, I wouldn't run this on the more defensive set, but if you're running a more yeah. offensive set with like Life Force, Sheer Force, which is really cool because Sheer Force gives you access to moves like Thunder Punch, which will be um, to a KOing Alamola with your base 120 attack. Um, yep. And then you have Sucker Punch for priority. You have moves like Gunk Shot, which nail, absolutely nail fairies. And it doesn't take that much speed to be at outspeed Pokemon like Aromatis, if any speed at all. It, um, you'll want a little bit of speed to outspeed Diancy, but you won't yeah. need any speed to uh, get ahead of um, Aromatis or any of the other fairies. Um, on the offensive set, I actually like running Iron Tail for Diancy, because Gunk Shot will not uh, Oko it. Yeah. And obviously... Um, since base 50 is a very common speed tier, you'll find uh, pretty much everything around there trying to creep, speed creep each other. You mean Iron Head? Uh, you mean Iron Head, right? No, no, Iron Tail. It doesn't. Uh, I don't think it learns. Oh, well, I mean, it gets Iron Head though. Which no, does... it gets Iron. It gets Iron Tail. Oh, um, but okay. Like, like, like Iron, like Iron Head does one shot Diancy. But the reason I say Iron Tail is because it also two it carries Rhyperior without having to walk into uh, Outrage. Okay, okay. Um, but on the subjects of Outrage, um. It's like incredibly powerful, but unlike uh, Black and White, um, Drudigan can't really lock lock into it as easily because fairies are obviously immune to it. Um, we have Bronzong in the tier, Registeel in the tier. There's plenty of good resistances, and that really does sap a lot of its power. Correct. Um, and, and like you said, uh, the Rocky Helmet Ruskin physically defensive set is definitely really good. Probably the best set it has right now, and. Like, it can even be a makeshift spin blocker because Blastoise has to have like around 30% HP or something like that to um, successfully rapid spin. Otherwise, it goes down and your hazards stay. Um, I mean, either way, your, ha your hazards stay because you can glare and then set up Stealth Arc again. Blastoise cannot spin. Uh, right. Yeah. Yeah, it can't keep spinning. Um, and then obviously, and then the other thing is that dra pure dragon, um, very underrated defensive typing, has some very good resistances on the special side, like to grass, fire, water, yep. electric. So you can even turn especially defensive with leftovers um, if you don't really need it to take physical hits or don't really care to fully exploit Ruskin. So it does have that going for it as well. 
but uh, it's just not nearly as good as it was in black and white. Uh, it's just because fairies exist now, there are better steel types in the tier now. And that low speed, even though you can get around it with like Sucker Punch, Trick Room, or Paralysis Support, it's just really hard to overcome. And if it, <coughs> if it had closer to 60 base speed, you could more easily speed creep Olamomola to 2 it KO it with Thunder Punch. But considering you need like half of your EVs to out to outspeed Olamomola, that just takes away so much bulk. Yeah, it's like 144 or 140 EVs to outspeed zero speed Olamomola. Um, but on top of that, uh, he did mention there are steel types in the tier. However, most of them, if not all, are KO'd by Life from Adamant, Sheer Force Boosted, Fire Punch. So it's really cool yeah. that uh, Judgment yeah, yeah, at, at, yeah, at the very least, they're two KO'd, but but the problem is you can't be locked in the outrage. Um, yeah, man, they come that, in. main issue. Yeah, um, you're typically like, that, that's why I actually like to run Dragon Claw uh, over Outrage. Uh, though Outrage is so spammable and strong, uh, obviously strong, like spammable in the sense that if the fairies are gone, it's gonna get the kills. Um, yeah, yeah. But, I typically run Dragon Claw just so I can use the coverage more reliably. Correct. Because you need it a lot more than you did in Black and White, which it's been unfortunate for Dragon because it really just. For those of you who didn't play black and white, Dredigan was like, come in, click Outrage, because the most defensive steel type in the tier, I think, was like Ferrisseed or something like that, which isn't going, which outside of Iron Barbs isn't going to be doing a lot of damage to you, and it's just straight KO'd by Fire Punch. Um, but, uh, like, just, just the fact that steel types are, like, better defensive steel types are around, fairy types are around, just makes it really hard for Dredigan offensively. But it still has like defensive sets going for it, which is definitely nice. Yeah. And the uh, the next Pokemon we're going into is my jam bats, uh, Dugtrio. Dugtrio is such a cool <laughs> mon. Dugtrio is one of those mons that's uh, I would classify as oh, hard to counter because it's a Pokemon that comes in or it, impossible to counter. I don't know. I feel like that's a way to say it. Like it's a Pokemon that just comes in and um, revenge it can, kills. It can, it, it, yeah, it counters kill. you. It counters you basically. Yeah. Uh, like it's not going to be coming in on its own unless uh, you get a really good read on a double or something like that. Uh, because its defenses are well non-existent. No, yeah. I'll just say, I mean, I'll it, just say that. Much. It has a really really high speed tier though, 372. Um, I think that's oh, yeah. outside of Aerodactyl and Jolteon. I think that's the highest speed tier. Um, in Excel Gore too. Yeah, yeah, and Excel Gore. That's the highest beats are in there. And the thing about Duckshell, even though it only has base 80 attack, which is 259, Duckshell isn't meant to be a sweeper. It's meant to be a revenge killer. So you set up with your Drapion. It doesn't have Shooker Bear. He comes in after and hits Earthquake. You have an SD Verizion. Uh, it already took Stealth Rock damage. Duckshell comes in after and revenge kills you with Aerial Ace. Um, you have a Delphox that came in, doesn't have a sub up, or isn't Scarf. It's gone with Earthquake. Exactly. And then it does have cool options like Memento as well. I actually run Memento on my Choice Bandit set uh, just because typically all I need is Earthquake, Aerial Ace, and maybe the random Sucker Punch or Stone Edge. But typically you don't hit those Pokemon anyway. Yeah, like, I'm, like, yeah. I'm not hitting Fletchling. Uh, or excuse me, Fletchlander. Why do I keep saying that? I'm not hitting Fletchlander because Fletchlander obviously has the, um, the Gale Wings going before me. But yeah, typically you're just spamming Earthquake or Aerial Ace. Uh, just for, not spamming Aerial Ace, but Aerial Ace is just a revenge kill. Uh, mainly Verizion, and um, because Earthquake yeah. does more to Venusaur, if you guys didn't know. And yeah, Earth Earth Earthquake does more to pretty much everything uh, else. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But this is a cool mod because it can actually come in on Pokemon like Registeel as well and 2 KO them because Registeel is running like... Uh, one Iron Head, if they do run it, is a 2 KO. And Seismitoss is... Well, Seismitoss can also be a 2 KO, depending on if you took damage or not. But you're usually uh, revenge killing Registeel before it can kill you. Um, basically, um, whenever I see Ductrio on the opposing team, I feel like when I'm using Registeel, I have to constantly click Seismic Toss. Because if I set up Stealth Rock and that thing's bold enough to come in, then I just lost my Registeel for next to nothing, especially if they have like Flygon on, on their team. Yeah. Or, or Blastoise, it, even. It's a Pokemon um, that makes you think twice about the moves you're saying. Are you going to double when you bring in something? Are they going to double? Are you going to actually attack when you bring in something? Like It's just one of those Pokemon that... And the the awesome thing about it too is that like it doesn't matter if you attack or not if it comes in after and revenge kills you. So Duck yeah, is a type absolutely. Pokemon that can be patiently played as well by your opponent. And yes. uh, another move I like on it um, is Toxic 
basically, so like if you've revenge killed everything you need to, and like your team can handle everything else, and say they bring in something like Slow King or Alamomola after you revenge kill something, then uh, if you're life orb, you can just hit them with toxic as you go down, and then they're put on a timer, which makes it so much easier for your offensive Pokemon to knock them out. Exactly. And again, uh, Memento is just such a cool option as well. Uh, oh, yeah. Those last-ditch effort that just allows setup for a bunch of different minds. Um, if you Ferizion, Memento, yep, Fletcher, Fletch, uh, exactly, yeah, because Duck can be used to trap. Uh, it can be used to trap. Um, what's it called? Deancey. And the thing is, Deancey doesn't knock it out with Moonblast, so Duck can actually switch in on Deancey if he wants to. Um, I wouldn't recommend it because if they go for Diamond Storm, they get a defense boost and you lose your Duck Trio. Uh, or, but, they, or, they go, or they go for Trick Room and all of a sudden you're outsped. Yeah, exactly. But um, it's definitely just such a cool option and it gives the ability for a ton of different partners to uh, set up. And that's why I really, really like Duck Trio. Back in, uh, back in XY, are you? I ran Duck Trio all the time. Um, with like Omega, Meloetta, that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because th this thing with the Omega was like. Even, even in Yu as well. Yeah, it was at, like it was absolutely ridiculous um, in the mid stages of XY when like Yamega, Zoroark, um, and Meloetta were like the top attackers in the tier. Um, it, it did kind of fall from grace a bit uh, when Oras came out because it it still like trapped the same things it did. It just wasn't as important. And then once Ferizion started rising to be like the top sweeper in the tier, Mega Steelix left, like everything just kind of fell into place for Dugtrio to be really good again. Yeah, definitely. It's just such a great mod. Um, I just love the uh, uh, the fact that like it comes in, you can't do anything. You really have to think twice about when you play around this Pokemon. You might think, oh man, base 35 HP, crappy defenses. This mod only, isn't doing only, only base AD attack. Yeah, but like, the thing is, when it's it, you pair that with a choice man, when it's revenge killing Pokemon that it has super effective hits versus Registeel, Deancey, Drapion, like they're going down. Yeah, ba yeah. Basically, uh, a lot of people call it, and for good reason, the ultimate revenge killer because it basically picks and chooses what it reven like what it comes in on. Yeah, like it's like it's like basically if if you have Earthquake that's super effective and can knock out the opposing Pokemon. You're sitting in Dugtrio after a KO, and boom, they're gone. Um, one other move I will mention that um, it like it's I wouldn't use it all the time, but it's kind of like that. Yeah, pursuit because Hoopa <laughs> can still switch switch out, um, and obviously Hoopa's not going to be taking Earthquake anyway, like with Choice Band, but because it's Ghost type, it's not affected by Arena Trap, so it may try to switch out. No, you don't. Pursuit, you're gone. Yeah, and it is obviously four times effective, so it will kill, it will kill uh, Hoopa. Uh, I'm actually curious if it kills Hoopa if it doesn't switch. I kind of doubt it. I kind of doubt it, but I'm actually calculating it right now. Um, it might. Just to see, because I mean, it is four times effective. Yeah, uh, so, it might. So, I, I don't think it does, but it might. Let me see. I, I got Choice Band. It pursued this 95 to 112. That's, two, yeah, so, that's so, the Hooper so staying in. So if it took Stealth Rock or a Life Orb hit, it's safe to go for Pursuit versus that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So uh, again, it, again, basically, you're using Earthquake Aerial Ace on every set, and then you've got like three or four moves to choose from, like Sucker Punch, Memento, Toxic, Pursuits. To fill in the last two slots, just kind yeah. of pick and choose what you need. And you can also use a life orb set if you do want to be able to switch up moves. Um, it obviously doesn't hit as hard, but in the scenario, for example, where you're going for pursuit on Hoopa and they they uh, they either switch out or stay in, they get the switch initiative after, so they could potentially pursue trap you then with uh, something coming out. So uh, obviously, that ability to switch up moves isn't necessarily terrible on Duck Trail, but typically you do want the Choice Bandit set just because it hits so right. hard. And, uh, it really now, I, now I will mention, if you're using Life Orb, uh, you will actually want to put uh, 12 EVs in the HP, so you always live two Seismic Tosses from Registeel before you go down. That way you can still KO it. Yeah. Um, because obviously you're taking life orb damage on top of seismic toss damage, so you want to make sure you can still take two seismic tosses to knock out Registeel. Yeah, makes sense, makes sense. But uh, I think that's all we have enough to say about Dark Trio. I'm, I really yeah, have nothing yeah, else. That, yeah, that's um, all I got. Yeah, so we're actually going to be ending this episode here, guys. Uh, thank you everybody for watching. Feel free, of course, to leave a like, subscribe, do your thing, and um, we will see you guys later. Goodbye. Bye.